Sweden had over 90 cars set on fire last night. It was a coordinated youth gang violent attack in multiple cities, I believe Mal Malmo, a few other ones, which a lot of people have been referring to as no-go zones. If you can't figure out what that means, it means don't go there. It's not a good place to go. You might get raped, you might get killed, uh, or you might get your car set on fire. I'm not saying that happens everywhere, but I mean, if you look at you know, a lot of these stories in, in the UK, like the one that Tommy Robinson was trying to cover, like they were grooming a bunch of kids, like it was a big rape gang, extremist grooming rape gang, and then you try to talk about it and then they throw you in jail for talking about it. So it's almost like, you know, they don't, no, these don't exist, but they do exist. And I'm trying to protect women and children from, you know, getting killed or raped, but apparently I'm the terrible person for saying that. Anyway, in Sweden, you have 90 cars set on fire in a coordinated attack. The media just started barely covering it. I, I got a report from Peter Sweden. He's on Twitter. He's great if you haven't followed him. But um, overall, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on with the attacks because according to his report, and you could check, the difference between me and mainstream media is they say, here's my opinion. Here's my perspective. Here's my fake fact that I made up. You have to believe it. And if you don't believe it, you're racist, sexist, xenophobic, deplorable. I don't do that. I tell you what I know. I tell you what I don't know. I tell you to research for yourself. I tell you when I'm not 100% sure, which is much more than Washington Post, New York Times, and uh, you know CNN and MSNBC do. They constantly make up gossip TMZ rumors every single week, report it as fact, and then call you a racist and delete your channel off YouTube if you disagree with them. That's called fascism. That's called sick and disgusting individuals who are trying to control all the flow of information. What I'm doing is simply trying to have a discussion before we turn into 1984 V for Vendetta. So on that note, Peter Sweden reported that none of these, I believe there were like dozens of kids, maybe like 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Go, go watch his uh, live stream if you want to hear more. He said that none of them got arrested. So this is, this is liberal progressivism once again. Like I said, I don't like to pick sides, but I'm so tired of the failing ideology of the left because although it's not about sides that divide us, it is about common sense, it is about self-accountability, and it is about protecting your country and protecting the women and children in your country. So if that's what it takes to actually you know, have a backbone and make a few people upset, I don't care, because I'm not a coward and I don't wanna see a bunch of women and children get hurt and people's cars constantly get exploded. But anyway, he said that none of them got arrested. So, you know, just set 90 cars on fire, you know, coordinated attack, which is pretty scary if you think about it. It's like in the United States, although it's not as big, say in California, because I believe California is roughly the size of Sweden. It's like 90 cars getting set on fire in Los Angeles, in San Diego, in, you know, San Francisco, a coordinated attack. You don't see that very often. So it's not just like a normal, oh, if a car got set on fire or two cars got set on fire or oh, 20 cars got broken into tonight, which isn't great either. I mean, we shouldn't have that type of crime either, but it's 90 cars being set on fire. And this is not a surprise to anybody who actually knows what's going on. I've been reporting it here because I just find it fascinating that no liberals and progressives, although they claim to love women and children, that they don't, uh, they don't actually care about any of these narratives, which is pretty strange to me because they love talking about socialism in Europe, but they don't like talking about what socialism does to Europe, which is the failing ideology of being completely naive, completely pandering to certain ethnicities, and completely overly hateful to certain ethnicities. And that's what they do, the exact opposite of what they claim to do. But if you just Google or, or look on a Wikipedia, which has sources if, you, if you're questioning the authenticity of Wikipedia, because Wikipedia does you know, tend to be slightly dishonest and I think has a left-leaning bias, but there's been hundreds of grenade attacks and explosions in Sweden over the last couple years. Uh, in recent polling reports, the Sweden Democrats, who don't get confused, Sweden Democrats are actually the right-wing party. They're not the left-wing party. It's Democrats in Sweden are the right-wing party the social Democrats are the left-wing party. So uh, they're polling in certain polls like YouGov as the number one polling. It's, I mean, Sweden's never been right-wing, at least not for the last 100 years. I don't know about the 1800s or anything, but they're about to possibly go right-wing for the first time ever. And people are saying, why? Oh, everybody must be so racist. They're, they're neo-Nazis. It's like, no, not even remotely. It's because, you know, you go back to the 1970s and there was like, one hundredth of as many you know car explosions or one tenth or one fiftieth as many car explosions as there are now and now it's happening every single day you go back five years before they had mass uh you know immigration as far as refugees they took a bunch of people from libya syria and other countries that pretended like they were from libya and syria 
who there's nothing wrong with people from Libya and Syria, but if you haven't noticed, if you go to Libya, there's slave trade and organ harvesting. So if you don't take the right people from Libya, you might take the people who are literally enslaving human beings and are harvesting their organs. It's the same thing with Syria. There's nothing wrong with Syrian people. I have a lot of great friends that are Syrian, but if you take the wrong people from Syria, you're going to be taking people who blow things up. You're going to be ta taking people who put people on the front of their car in cages and sacrifice women and children. So there's nothing wrong with being Syrian or Libya. God bless anybody that, that is that. But liberals and progressives in Sweden and in UK and Germany were like, no, we hate white people and we love we love Syrians and Libyans. We want to help so much, even though we kind of started the war that, you know, displaced them. We, you know, our leaders and liberal leaders from the UK and conservatives too, you know, fake conservatives, fake Republicans, fake Democrats, started these wars, created a mass refugee crisis, and then said, you know what, we're gonna, we're, we're so great that we're, we're gonna destroy their country and then we're gonna bring them here. Although they don't have the common sense, they don't have the backbone that I have, unfortunately. And I'm not saying that like I'm so great, I'm saying that as inspiration and motivation. If you're a progressive or a socialist and you watch all these phony news analysts who tell half-truths and then they say, hey, let's raise your taxes and bring in a bunch of people that'll destroy your country, uh, I'm just, I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you to tell the truth or report on these stories or take an honest look at the UK or Sweden or Germany and find out that what they did and what every liberal and what every, almost every progressive does or else you wouldn't be part of that ideology, uh, what they do is they look at it and they say, no, 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 we, we gotta help everyone, we're so nice, we, we're so not racist, we're so not bigots, that we're gonna take in 500,000 people from Syria and Libya or we're gonna take in two million people from Libya and Syria. And what really happened in actuality is they weren't barely any women and children. Oh, we're gonna help all the women and children. And then you look at the, you know, the mass immigration boats and it's like there's not a single kid or a woman on the boat. Why is it? Because the people that you took, and there's nothing wrong with the, this, the religion, there's nothing wrong with these countries, but it just so happens that those specific people that you took don't like women. That's why they kill them. And that's why they don't let them show their face in certain countries. And they don't like children. They don't care about children. That's why they're in New Mexico sacrificing their children, trying to turn them into Jesus Christ. So, hmm. So if you take in 500, 600,000 and say 200, 300,000 of them don't like women and children, there aren't women and children there. And what do you get? You get modern day Sweden. You get modern day UK. You get modern day pretty much uh, everywhere in Europe. Germany, where the crime and migrant uh, violence rate is sky high and Reuters reported on it mainstream news reported on it But then when Trump said it the news reported the opposite So they actually use Trump like a scapegoat whether you love or hate Trump you should know that the media They use Trump as a cover-up tool. I don't know if they purposely do it or they just do it to their convenience But they will report something until Trump reports it and then when Trump reports it They'll say that Trump said it. So then if you don't like Trump, you won't believe it. So they'll say that, you know, violence is up in UK and Sweden, and then Trump will say it, and then they'll say that it's not true. Or they'll just tell you that he said it. So they'll make it look crazy. They've told you Trump is crazy, Kanye West is crazy. So if Trump says it or Kanye West says it, write it off. So, so it's like they'll report something for four years, Trump will say it one time, and then they'll say he said it so you don't pay attention to it. These are the games that they play, and I don't even like to do live streams like this because I know it's not gonna be received well by everyone, but you know, it is just the truth. And if you care about Sweden, you care about UK, you care about uh, America, you should face these truths and ask news analysts on the left why they don't wanna have a conversation about this and why they're so desperate to basically tank our communities. I don't know any other way to put it. So 90 cars were set on fire in Sweden in a coordinated attack. According to Peter Sweden, they deleted the video that I have on World Cloud currently. They deleted that video off of Facebook, which comes a week after. And this is one sick thing that they've done. That's, I mean, it's just past the point of being okay. We're skirting on the very outside fringes of like a technocracy, total fascist communist society where the media and the social media companies run everything and they're not running in the right direction. They're running in a very, very bad direction that will tank everything that you know and love about the United States of America. So the Sweden right wing party put out a video on YouTube two weeks ago or a week ago explaining how the social Democrats who are the left wing party explaining how they actually have Nazi ties because the, the left wing party in Sweden, just like the left wing here, 
says, oh, the right-wing party of Sweden are Nazis. But if you look at history and they had cutouts of newspapers, it was actually the left-wing Swedish party that had ties with Nazi Germany. So the right-wing party just published it. They said, you call us Nazis all the time, you know, which is a huge overstatement, but here's actual proof that you literally worked with Nazis in the 1960s. And YouTube deleted that video. So you have Facebook and YouTube meddling in Swedish elections. They're giving nonstop press to the left wing. The left wing's perfect, the left wing's perfect. Ignore, don't listen to Anomaly. Ignore the fact that 90 cars were set on fire. Ignore that there's been hundreds of grenade attacks and explosions in Sweden, which is pretty weird. Could you imagine in your neighborhood explosions all the time? Do you want that? I mean, we have problems in the United States, but we don't have explosions yet. Let's take care of our own problems. Let's take care of our own people before we bring in a bunch of other people. I mean, you walk around liberal cities and there's hundreds of thousands of people living in tents. There's tens of thousands of people in foster care, hundreds of thousands of kids in foster care. Why don't we take care of our own people before we bring a bunch of other people like France and then you go to France and you can't even walk around anymore. Everybody in France and Paris will tell you, don't go there, don't go there. And you'll be like, oh no, I've been here before. And they're like, no, 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 it's not like it used to be. They have a terrorist fence built around the Eiffel Tower because it's that bad there. They have homeless people. They're like, oh, we're such good people. We're gonna take in these people who we don't know who they are and we're gonna dump them on the streets because we're such amazing people. No, it doesn't work. But they're censoring and silencing people who talk about this type of stuff. They're censoring and silencing political parties of Sweden, YouTube, deleting their video, which had like 170,000 views, explaining history. So they wanna tear down statues. Oh, Robert E. Lee was very, very racist. So, okay, yeah, so now what are we gonna do about that? That happened like 300 years ago. We're gonna tear down the statue. Okay, so the same people that are tearing down statues the same people that are manipulating social media and deleting entire videos of Swedish political parties so people don't see actual cardboard cutouts of history, people who are flipping history and don't want to tell you, you know, the actual ideology behind Mussolini and Hitler and, you know, explore all angles of it where it's like, yes, he was a national, yes, yes, he was a nationalist, yes, he was a racist, but he did also have universal health care and he wanted free government sanctioned education and he wanted complete control of the media. So it's like, yeah, there were elements of the right wing today, but there are also very many elements strategically and systemically of the left wing. But the same people that wanna cry racism and say the history's so bad, they're trying to manipulate and change the face of history and put a microscope on certain parts of it, put a microscope on certain people, and then cover up and silence complete other parts of history. So it's like, what's going on in Sweden? Uh, that, that's my report.